I'm Kevin Jacobson of Gold Derby here with Will Sharp, who directed and co-wrote the new biopic film, The Electrical Life of Louis Wayne. And I just want to start at the beginning. Um, what was the key uh -huh. to, to Louis Wayne as an artist, as a person that inspired you to want to tell his story? Um, well, I guess the first thing was, you know, I felt an immediate connection with his pictures. Um, and I was really fascinated by how on the surface of it, they were these very innocent, playful tableau of cats, you know, often doing human things like playing tennis or gambling in a bar, whatever it might be. But there would often be some inscription or some detail in the picture that betrayed an underlying fragility um, or vulnerability, perhaps you could say. And the more I read about his life, the more I was struck by how I guess, first of all, he really did lead a truly remarkable life. Um, but also I found him to be a personally inspiring figure. I thought he was somebody who showed huge resilience and courage, you know, often in the face of um, personal tragedy or, you know, sometimes just living through a difficult era, which is something that perhaps, you know, people can relate to at the moment. Um, but I guess, long story short, at some point I fell in love with him and as with all projects that you end up working on, I just couldn't get it out of my head. Um, and uh, here we are. Yeah. Um, and uh, Simon Stevenson wrote the original story. I'm curious how much you built off of his screenplay when you were developing the film. Um, well, I guess, you know, like uh, I, you know, work quite closely on the script and the development of it. Uh, and the story of his life is, you know, the key events remain um but perhaps you know the point of emphasis uh might be different but i i think you know the one thing that we always felt and agreed on was how you know in order to understand this person's life we needed to understand his relationship with emily um and uh, i guess like it, it if anything is just how, how the cats sit in there perhaps um but yeah and I would say that this isn't a standard biopic. I mean, it does go through a huge portion of his life, but there's just a, a vibrancy to the style that I think you bring to the story. Just the visual design is very colorful. The score is very evocative. I mean, you have these like abstract moments um, where you're really digging into the inner workings of his mind. Um, so I guess I'm curious how much, how you, or how you developed the visual elements and even the sound elements um, sure. and sort of how you came upon this approach to tell the story. Well, I mean, the biggest influence on the, you know, world of the film, I think, is Louis Wayne himself. We really wanted mm -hmm. to capture and enjoy hit the way that he delighted in colors and patterns to lean into, you know, his, his tone, like the, you know, the fairy tale aspect, I suppose, you know, speaks to how he was famous, you know, often for illustrating and even sometimes trying his hand at uh, fairy tales himself. Um, so, you know, Susie Davies, the designer, Eric Wilson, the DP, uh, and I, alongside Michael O'Connor and Vicky Lang in costume and makeup, we all worked, you know, very closely, always cross-pollinating ideas to try and construct what we came to call Wayne's World as a, as a shorthand. Um, and uh, that, as you say, you know, also bleeds into the sound design uh, and into, I guess, Louis Wayne was somebody who it always seemed to me was, was hungry to understand the world. Uh, and to try to work out what it ran on, you know, conversations about mental health were not as advanced back then as they are now. And he was, I think, often trying to understand why it, sometimes he felt like the world around him was so cruel and he felt so anxious and terrified. And other times he felt so uplifted and in love and he was just trying to figure it out. So I, I guess I wanted us to join him on that quest. Um, and so, you know, the visual style and occasionally, um, you know, the score and the sound design, all of that is trying to help the audience uh, share in his life experience and to understand as best we can what it might have felt like to be him, I suppose, and to live through some of what he, he lived through. Um, and, you know, with the score, Arthur was very keen to sort of find a way to uh, render that feeling of electricity it hanging in the air 
um, but without leaning, you know, on synthesizers and sort of tri uh, modern electronic instruments. He wanted to have an awareness of the period and to feel organic and almost like it was coming out of out of the ground and out of the air rather than something that was too digital. And I guess we had the same attitude to, on the camera side. We wanted it to feel very analog. We'd often use, you know, back projection, step printing techniques. Some of it was projected and shot back onto 16 mil film, um, all in aid of trying to, as you say, give it this psychological feeling. Because um, I guess very early on, I felt like I knew that I wanted this to feel like a life. Um, and I wanted the movie to play like a life. And so a lot of it is trying to kind of imagine, also trying to sort of unpack how that feels to move through your life, how it feels to remember something from earlier in your life, how it feels to wash up a decade later and wonder how you got there. Uh, and so I think that probably has affected some of the decision making as well. Yeah, it, it just, it does feel very, kinetic and I guess you could say electric in that way and I guess I'm also intrigued by the choice to then also uh film with the four by three ratio uh -huh. um why did that make sense for the story that you were telling well I think you know Eric Wilson and I decided that pretty early on and I think it's partly because it it sort of feels has a nostalgic quality to it and it feels like it speaks to that fairy tale aesthetic um, that felt germane to, you know, Louis Wayne's work. Um, and it sort of suits some of the gro group blocking portraiture that we knew we wanted to try and mimic from his own, you know, artwork. But I also, like personally, I always think that four by three works really well for close-ups and for intimate scenes as well. And especially after, you know, the rehearsal period with Benedict Cumberbatch and Claire Foy, feeling how easy and natural their chemistry was, I started to feel how I really wanted them to share the frame as much as possible. Um, and, you know, with 4 by 3 because you have very little negative space, you're able to fill the entire image with your actors and all you have really is the nuances of their performance. And there are certainly some, you know, key scenes, especially between them, uh, where I think it really helps get the audience, you know, deep into where they're at emotionally. Mm. Yeah, definitely helps it feel all the more full, I suppose. Um, and speaking again more to the cinematography and the visual design, it, it's a very good looking movie, but there's a few shots here that are truly like a step above, like the moment we see um, Louis and his wife in the field and there's all this beautiful greenery around them and it truly looks like a painting. Um, and you revisit it again at the end. Um, I'm just really curious how you went about accomplishing that shot and filming in that area in particular. <clears throat> well, it's a combination. I mean, in that there is some actual physical, you know, old style matte painting uh, mm. that was done uh, uh, that we then comped in, you know, obviously digitally in the end. Um, but I mean, I probably don't have to walk you through time to walk you through the entire process, but there was a certain amount. And I guess, you know, Louis Wayne is famous for his cat pictures, probably most famous for his kaleidoscopic cat pictures, which are these very psychedelic, um, I guess, cat pictures, but only if you squint your eyes and sort of defocus. Uh, but I was also struck by, I went to see an exhibition at Bethlehem Museum of the Mind, and I saw some of his landscapes um, in real life, which are kind of, again, on the surface of it, they seem like straight up landscapes. But if you you start to notice that actually the colours are really wild and really vivid. And I felt like there was somehow a kind of felt like a little window into his soul or something and I found them very moving, uh, I guess. And so I felt like I wanted that those pictures to play a part in the story somewhere also. And so, uh, you know, working with a visual effects team with, uh, you know, we experimented with infrared cameras and various other techniques that all felt to me too digital uh, and too convenient um, somehow. And in the end, it was um, a combination of working with an analog uh, video artist in New York who specializes in video feedback techniques, sending him images, bits of art, Louis Wayne's art, clips from the film and then he would send back hours and hours and hours of footage that 
had been, you know, refracted and manipulated in quite a sort of uh, random way. And then we would work through that and try to layer it up and find a way to make it feel organic and uncanny. And as I said, some, you know, some shots we projected shot back onto 16 mil and then one batch was sent to be clean processed. And we used those for the more dreamy, romantic, um, electrical moments, if you like. And then another batch went to someone called James Holcomb, who is one of the few people to still hand process film in the UK. And he would deliberately treat the stock very roughly and corrupt the bath and you know, play with the temperature so that it would come back with that very synaptic, scratchy, sort of anxious feeling. And that's what we used more in, you know, in New York and in the sort of passages of the story where Louis Wayne is feeling quite out of sorts. Yeah, it's it's a, it's a lot that comes together, but I do think it 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 is well executed. I, I mean, we could talk about the oh, visual design all day, but I also want to talk <laughs> about this cast, uh, starting with yeah. Benedict Cumberbatch. Uh, I'm wondering what made him the right actor to try and capture Louis's spirit, and just what what sort of your big takeaways were from working with him. Well, I think you know he's a technically you know, extraordinary actor. And you know, the first thing, I guess, to, to sort of bear in mind at least is how whoever was gonna play Louis Wayne needed to transform from a young man, a sort of, you know, but pretty much teenager to a really old man in the seventies or eighties. Uh, and I felt like, you know, from rehearsing with Benedict uh, and the commitment and sort of attention to detail he puts in at the front end to try and master a way of moving, a way of talking, a way of, you know, sitting, dancing even, and how how sort of uh, rigorously he, you know, for example, wanted to perfect the technique of drawing with two hands that Louis Wayne was famous for. <laughs> All of that, um, you know, uh, care and commitment in the prep phase, I think means that he's able to be very instinctive on set. Um, and I always was really impressed with how gracefully and efficiently he could sort of find a flow, he could find a zone, if you like, uh, with the scenes. Um, but yeah, no, he, he was already attached when this project was sent to me by Sunny March, um, which is his company. But I happened to have uh, just been watching Patrick Melrose around the time. Uh, and so, and of course, was super excited uh, to have the opportunity to work with him. So, yeah, no, it was, it was really, I'm very grateful to have had that experience. Yeah. And, you know, even outside of him, you have Claire Foy, uh, Andrea Riceborough, Toby Jones, Haley Squires. You have like smaller roles for people like Taika Waititi and Nick Cave and Olivia Coleman is the narrator. It's a, it's a great, a great cast, I must say. And it's not always easy, I think, to give the characters outside of the main character a level of complexity, especially in a biopic. Um, but I'm curious if any of those actors actually elevated their roles even beyond what you had intended for those characters. I mean, I guess they all did in a way, because as soon as the actors like that start to wear a character, you know, that's the moment where it starts to come to life. Um, and, I, you know, we went alongside Dixie Chasse, the casting director, we would went through the normal process of, you know, who would we love to play this role? I would write to them or we would get people in to read. Uh, and, you know, I just, to this day, I'm slightly astonished. Uh, and again, just feel very lucky to have worked with so many remarkable people. Um, I mean, I will say that with Claire Foy, um, you know, I knew that whoever played Emily needed to be someone who could make a really strong impact in you know the time that she has within the movie and that we would need to carry her with us through the movie um and i think she brings like such a a, a beautifully nuanced kind of uh, balance of light and dark with emily and she feels like a very sort of warm spirit but with her own flaws and complexities and i really love how i guess the way benedict and claire play with each other and how these two people who sat so outside of society, you can see how they really make each other feel seen. Um, and that chemistry, I think, uh, you know, is, um, is at the heart of this film. And it's what we 
we miss and we long for and what we reflect on uh, as we as we reach those sort of final moments so yeah they do they work really well together um and also, I feel like there's there is just this restlessness to Louis and this feeling that the present is fleeting and but there's like a certain electricity in the past and in the future and there's something very insightful in his approach to his art. Um, and I'm wondering how much was that something that you resonated with as an artist yourself? Um, I mean, I, I guess. I don't know. I mean, I've, I felt like, I suppose, like I say, we wanted this to be a really empathetic version of his story. Um, and I really wanted to try to understand him and to try to get under his skin and into his mind and, you know, work alongside Benedict to try as, as well as we could to give a sense of this human being almost more than a, historical figure or, or even really as an artist. But I think what I did want to avoid was this sense of, oh, there's this guy and he for almost his entire life drew and painted cats. And he also struggled with mental illness, um, go figure. You know, I didn't want it to be, here's this kooky, crazy man uh, who, who, who was responsible for Kooky Crazy Pictures, I wanted to understand, you know, like how these are real events from his life. He really did, uh, he really was outcast from his family for pursue, for sort of committing to his romantic relationship with Emily. Um, and she really was terminally diagnosed with cancer very soon after they got married. And they really did adopt a kitten at a time where that was a really weird thing to do. And that kitten really did bring them comfort and warmth at a difficult time in their lives. And then he became the person who draws cats. So I suppose I was interested in how, how he got there uh, and what that might, you know, what, what are we actually seeing when we see these pictures um, and where, does it, where did it come from? So uh, for sure, I, there were things about him, as I say, that I found deeply inspiring, um, but more than anything, I wanted to, to understand him. Um, well, we don't have a lot of time left, but I wanted to end with something a little fun. I'm wondering if you had a take just on cats, since that was the subject of fascination for Louis Wayne, and just, I guess, what you think makes them such compelling creatures, especially for, like, an artist. I mean, they are fun. I, I have two cats um, yeah. at home, and they are funny. Like, they do do funny things and they do occasion like I can sort of relate to Louis Wayne being convinced that they will someday start just talking human language because so I do occasionally find myself just having a full-on conversation with uh, one or other of our cats but I think like I guess what I one of the things I really admired about Louis Wayne was he was so unembarrassedly himself you know and often it was very inconvenient for him to be himself but he just couldn't help it there was no other way that he could be and that in the end seemed like a really beautiful thing about him and about his life. And cats are, you know, as filming with them has proven completely independent. And they're, they're absolutely happy just to be whatever it is they are on that day. Um, and I think that's what makes them feel, that's what makes it feel like when you do find yourself having a moment of connection with a cat, it feels real. It doesn't feel like it's cheap. Uh, if you know what it I feels mean. earned yeah it feels earned yeah. yeah um and so i guess there's a there's a degree of that kind of burbling away as an undercurrent in this story as well um that you know louis wayne was someone who perhaps not always fully understood in his life but he's deserving of love you know and yeah. our love very true um well for those of you watching, like and subscribe for more interviews and head to goldderby.com to make your Oscar predictions. Uh, Will, thanks so much for talking with me today and congrats on the film. Thank you so much. Have a good one.